Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, we're once again returning to the realm of laptop hardware to talk about NVIDIA's refreshed lineup of GeForce 20 series GPUs. So far, we've already covered the two big new GPUs, the RTX 2070 Super Max Q and the RTX 2080 Super Max Q, but alongside these chips, NVIDIA quietly updated their older GPUs with improvements to their specifications, making them, yeah, a more compelling option for buyers. The particularly big news surrounded the RTX 2060. Previously, NVIDIA only allowed laptop OEMs to push up to 90 watts of power to the RTX 2060, with most manufacturers choosing the default 80 watts for their system. Now, with the 2020 refresh of gaming laptops, NVIDIA is increasing that power limit up to a maximum of 115 watts, which is a surprisingly big deal for laptop buyers. The reason for that is that, well, the RTX 2060 kinda sucked at its default 80 watt power limit, and this is something many of you have pointed out in some of our review videos previously. On average, the RTX 2060 at 80 watts performs about equally to the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti, another 80 watt GPU in Nvidia's lineup. In the best cases, like Control, the RTX 2060 was up to 5% faster, but in the worst cases, the GTX 1660 Ti could be up to 6% faster. This isn't great for buyers, because RTX 2060 laptops have historically been a decent amount more expensive, somewhere in the $200 plus range. Now yeah, the RTX 2060 does include features like ray tracing and tensor cores, so it supports features like DLSS as well, but without a raw performance difference between it and the GTX 1660 Ti, it doesn't make a lot of sense to fork out hundreds for the higher tier GPU. Nvidia seems to have recognized this issue because in allowing the RTX 2060 to push all the way up to 115 watts, it allows the GPU to get some separation from the 1660 Ti in the product stack. As we'll see in the benchmarks in a moment, with this change, the RTX 2060 makes a lot more sense as a laptop GPU. In terms of specifications, the new power limit is beneficial in raising rated clock speeds. Previously, the RTX 2060 would feature a 960 MHz base and 1200 MHz boost clock at 80 watts, or an 1110 MHz base and 1335 MHz boost at 90 watts. At 115 watts, the boost clock increases a fair bit, now up to 1560 MHz for a 17% rated increase over the 90 watt model. There are some other differences with the RTX 2060 for 2020 laptops. Nvidia is now using their new low voltage GDDR6 memory across the lineup, so this drops the clock rate for the memory down from 14 gigabits per second to 11 gigabits per second. While this does reduce memory bandwidth, it allows Nvidia to allocate more power to the GPU, which is a good solution for this GPU that tends not to be hugely memory limited. You'll also see that 80 watt GPU clock speeds are similar, while the 90 watt model has changed slightly. Slightly. Unfortunately, this does make the RTX 2060 lineup in laptops highly confusing, especially when you add in the RTX 2060 Max-Q. Not only do we have multiple power variants, we also now have multiple variants of the same GPU and power limit. A device ID of 10DE1F11 reveals an older 2060 model, while new 2060s get 10DE1F15. Nvidia do seem to be improving the 2060 for new laptops, so it's not like we're going backwards, but the job for laptop shoppers just got yeah, a whole lot harder. For benchmarking, today I'm using the MSI GL65 Leopard 10 SEK, which is the first laptop I was able to source with the new 115 watt variant of the RTX 2060. It's a bit of a surprise that this budget system is one of the first models to opt for the new higher power GPU variant, but it does seem to have a decent cooling solution that seems quite capable of the power increase. Standard test notes for laptop benchmarking apply. We always try and use apples to apples comparisons where possible, so we test all laptops with adequate cooling and dual channel memory. The numbers you see in the following charts are an average of systems with the same configuration. You can see the full list of laptops we tested in the description below. We also list the power limits for all configurations as that is an important factor for performance. Starting with a look at Red Dead Redemption 2, this is one of the best results for the new RTX 2060 at 115 watts. We're looking at around the same average performance as the full RTX 2070 configuration for laptops, while outperforming the older RTX 2060 configurations, as well as the GTX 1660 Ti by over 15%. Previously with power equivalent configurations, the 1660 Ti was marginally faster in this title, so now the RTX 2060 is delivering a reason to choose that higher tier model. 
Borderlands 3 shows a nice cadence of GPUs as we go up the stack. While previously the 1660 Ti and RTX 2060 were about equal, with the 90 watt model providing a small performance advantage, the new 115 watt variant improves performance by at least 10%. This puts the RTX 2060 above the RTX 2070 Max-Q and not far behind the RTX 2070 at 115 watts. It's in a much better position for this GPU. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is another title where the gap between the RTX 2060 and RTX 2070 has shrunk considerably thanks to the new power limit. The 2060 is sitting just 5% behind in this title, while delivering 11% more performance than the 2060's 80 watt configuration. The next step up is to Nvidia's super GPUs which occupy the top spots on the chart. Control, when played on the high preset, the maximum in the game, is the most GPU demanding title in our test suite. This is another game that benefits significantly from the increased power limit, with the 115 watt RTX 2060 coming in 15% ahead of the 90 watt configuration and 19% ahead of the 80 watt model. In very GPU demanding games using ultra type settings, it's definitely worth being on the lookout for the highest power model that Nvidia offers. Similar story in Metro Exodus. With 115 watts of power at the helm, the RTX 2060 is able to move up a class in terms of performance, now delivering a pretty consistent 60fps experience in our benchmark run. Once again, this variant of the 2060 is a better choice than the RTX 2070 Max-Q, which is an 80 watt GPU. Resident Evil 2 is an example of a game that benefits from both CPU and GPU performance when using the balanced preset at 1080p. The 115 watt variant does offer a higher frame rate than the 80 watt model when paired with an Intel CPU. However, the configuration of the Ryzen 7 4800H and 90 watt RTX 2060 is a bit better for 1% low performance while offering similar averages. Not every game is able to benefit solely from an increase in GPU power, the CPU is also important. Shadow of the Tomb Raider shows a modest performance gain for the 115 watt variant over the 80 and 90 watt models, to the tune of around 6 to 8% on average. This is enough to elevate this GPU to around the performance level of the RTX 2070, which is a great result. In Battlefield 5, I saw an 11% performance advantage comparing the 115 watt RTX 2060 to the 80 watt model, and a 6% lead on the 90 watt variant. However, while in some titles the 2060 gets pretty close to the 2070 with the same power limit, that's not the case in this game, falling over 10% behind, which is one of the largest differences I saw. Still, the 2060 is now sitting in a much better position in the product stack. Far Cry 5 is another game with a respectable performance lead over other power configurations, although it's not as good as we've seen. The 115 watt RTX 2060 is 11% faster than the 80 watt model here, or 6% ahead of the 90 watt model. This does allow the GPU to occupy a more mid-table position, which really is where the RTX 2060 should be positioned. A couple of older titles to round this one out. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is on the higher end of the performance gain table. This is a game where previously the GTX 1660 Ti was able to outperform the RTX 2060, but that's not the case with the new 115 watt power limit. This new model is now 10% ahead of the GTX 1660 Ti, which makes more sense given the price difference. And the final game we're looking at in detail today is Watch Dogs 2, still a great game for testing a combined CPU and GPU load. This title benefits quite nicely from the new 115 watt power limit, pushing 13% ahead of the 80 watt model and 9% ahead of the 90 watt variant. It still ends up 11% behind the RTX 2070, but it's a good result. So previously we saw that with both GPUs configured at the same 80 watt power target, the RTX 2060 wasn't faster than the GTX 1660 Ti, making it a poor option for buyers. But when both GPUs are configured to their new maximum power limits, 115 watts for the 2060 and still 80 watts for the 1660 Ti, it's a different story. Across 18 games, the RTX 2060 115 watt is now 13% faster on average, with some performance leads over 20% in the most GPU demanding games. It's no surprise then that the RTX 2060 115 watt is also 13% faster on average compared to the 80 watt configuration of the same GPU. Where the extra power leads to performance gains does vary a bit depending on the title, but as expected, giving this GPU an extra 35 watts of power to play with leads to a noticeable uplift in games. We also see an 8% lead on the RTX 2060 at 90 watts, so a modest improvement comparing the old maximum power limit to the new maximum power limit. 
Still, in GPU-heavy games like Control and Red Dead Redemption 2, you'll definitely want to be on the lookout for the higher power variant where possible, with gains around the 15% mark. This new 115 watt power limit allows the RTX 2060 to close the gap significantly on the RTX 2070, where previously the 2060 configured at 80 watts was 17% slower on average, sometimes up to 20% slower or more when comparing the 115 watt 2060 to 115 watt 2070, the 2060 is now just 7% behind on average. In some games, the two GPUs perform very similarly, in others, there's more of a performance gap. Naming confusion aside, Nvidia choosing to increase the maximum power limit on offer with the RTX 2060 for laptops solves one of the major issues with Nvidia's current generation mobile GPU lineup. Previously, the RTX 2060 was far too close to the GTX 1660 Ti in terms of average game performance, especially with the 80 watt variant. Now, if you can find a 115 watt model, you'll be treated to a genuine performance lead over the 1660 Ti. It now sits nicely between that GPU and the RTX 2070 for laptops. This makes it much easier to recommend RTX 2060 laptops, although you'll have to be careful to ensure you are buying something with the increased power limit. I stumbled upon the GL65 by accident, I actually had no idea this laptop used the 115 watt variant, and I'm sure there will still be a lot of 80 watt and 90 watt models out there. Another one I can think of off the top of my head is the Ryzen powered electronics RP15, which pushes up to 110 watts. Again, you'll need to do some research when buying your laptop to figure out which power configuration it has. On top of that, we also have Nvidia promising reduced prices for RTX 2060 laptops this generation, more in line with where GTX 1660 Ti models sat last year. Of course, the 1660 Ti is also cheaper now, and so far we haven't seen any laptops that hit Nvidia's promised $999 target price for the 2060, but generally speaking, a new 2060 laptop released this year will be cheaper and possibly faster than previous gen models. And I think all this stuff is worth highlighting because Back in 2019, I thought RTX 2060 laptops weren't particularly compelling options, especially as Nvidia introduced them at pretty high prices. While we aren't getting a full generational upgrade in 2020, Nvidia has addressed both the performance and pricing of this model, now making it a decent buy in some circumstances. And right now, that's really all you can ask for. And that's it for this investigation into the RTX 2060 for 2020 with the new 115 watt power variant. Hopefully you've all learned something and got something out of this video. Big thanks to all our Patreon members who support the channel directly. If you want to do so as well, you'll find links in the description below to, you know, access to our Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, all that stuff is included. Of course, you can subscribe for more laptop testing as well, and I'll catch you in the next one.